A couple of other folks. I wanted to welcome all of you officially uh, to this is the fifth African American genealogy history webinar um, with the South Carolina State Library and really appreciate all of you um, joining us today and we hope that you learned something. Um, we're going to have one more talk and that is going to be Dr. Walter Curry again on October 12th, 12 to 1. And um, so please do join us if you uh, uh, like to learn more. We'd like to do this series again in the future because it's been very successful. We've been um, learn, uh, meeting people all over South Carolina and having folks like um, Miss Anthony from Philadelphia, folks from California, New York, all over the place. So that's been really exciting. Uh, but I want to welcome Quintel Walker. He's our speaker today and he's going to talk about resources in um, upstate genealogy. And he is a library history associate at the um, Oconee County Library in Wahala, South Carolina. And um, Quintel was just telling me, uh, you've already worked at that library for a good while, but he switched into that position um, in this past year. Um, Quintel's very involved in the community and he has served as vice president of the board of directors of the Oconee History Museum. He's previously worked as the genealogy and local history librarian of the Pickens County Library System nearby. And he's formerly the president of the Old Pendleton District Genealogy Society, and that's part of the South Carolina State, Lib uh, State Genealogy Society, yep. one of the chapters. Mm -hmm. um, we are recording today and um, just want to let you know that. And I also made, uh, just for housekeeping, um, you have the ability, if you need a transcript, there's a little CC closed captioning down there below. And if that helps you, you can read the transcript and um, as you go. And Quintel has a lot to share with us today. So uh, I'm gonna hand it over to him. Thanks, Quintel. All right, thank you very much for that introduction, Virginia. Um, just before we begin, I just want to let everybody know that um, um, we are recording. And also we, we are asking that everyone be able to mute themselves uh, during this presentation and that um, <clears throat> as I'm going through the presentation, you're more welcome to ask any questions. I may not be able to catch them, but um, Virginia said that she'll let me know. And also we'll have time after the presentation for questions and I'll do my best to answer. And um, yep, so let's begin. All right, so I'll share my screen. Ta-da. Share. Okay. Can everyone see the screen okay? Yes, sir. All right, good. All right. So I call this presentation Follow the Trail. Now, um, there when it comes to genealogy and family history, they are two separate things. Genealogy basically is the practice of tracing a line of descent from an ancestor. This is seen with connecting names of life events, um, such as you know births, marriages, deaths, place of residence, and other things. When it comes to family history, family history is more like adding more, um, <clears throat> I'll say muscle to the bone. Um, the details basically is that it is taking the time to add details to the genealogical record and this is achieved by adding family stories, family photos, and researching in the area that your family lived in. Keep in mind, though, that you will not find, at this point in time, you will not find everything that you need for your family history research in one spot, that it will be uh, interconnecting piece, puzzle pieces of that. Um, for example, when it came to me doing research on my family, I started out with the family story. Then I had to move to doing um, research at the county offices in Oconee County, then various other books and archives around the state. Now, family stories, a lot of people try to discount those, but never discount your family story, essentially because they serve as an essential piece in starting um, and creating your genealogy. Typically, a family story will provide certain basic pieces of information, such as the name of your ancestor, the possible time period that the ancestor lived, and also other interesting details. For example, I'm going to use 
my family. The person who we derive the surname Walker from is Clark Walker. He was a, a slave in the this area, and he lived from about the 1840s and died somewhere within the 1910s. And that's about all I really know about him. The stories are is that Clark was a slave of a man by the name of Master Sheeler, at least that's what was always called, and his name actually was uh, Joseph Ryland Sheeler, and he came from Virginia and settled in the area. Another story with Clark is that Clark changed his surname to Walker. Um, we do not know what the original surname was. We, in doing some genealogy research, we kind of speculate now that possibly the surname could have been originally Benson and then changed to Walker, but we're still not 100% sure. And another story is, is that after the Civil War, Master Sheeler um, was broke, flat broke, and that he was unable to pay people that worked for him. However, Mr. Sheeler owned a lot of land, an extensive amount of land in Oconee County. And his land, if you're familiar with the area in Oconee County, um, he lived in what's now the Fair Play area. And he owned a huge swath of that of that area. And so the story is, is that the people that worked for him, he paid them not in money, but in land. And in our case, Clark did receive land from Mr. Sheeler. And then the last story about Clark is that Clark and Mr. Sheeler's son, Warren, were very close. So close, in fact, that Clark named his son Warren. And Warren is my great grandfather. And that name Warren carried from my great grandfather to my uncle Warren, who passed a few years ago. So this is an example of the actual deed that I found relating to Clark Walker. And actually this um, S.R. Sheeler, she was the wife of, I believe, Warren um, Sheeler. And in this initial transaction, I believe, yep, Warren obtained uh, 25 acres of land. And this is dated the 25th of February, 1887. Now, the thing with Clark that always kind of frustrated me with him is that 1870 is the year when African Americans appeared in the census. There were some beforehand, but that was typically those that were free persons of color. And also in 1850, 1860, they did a separate slave schedule, but that slave schedule only lists the name of the owner and then just the color and age and sex of the slave, essentially. So 1870, I cannot find Clark. And the thing is with this particular area, and I'll discuss this a little bit further on, is that in 1868, Oconee County was formed, but it was originally a part of what was called the Pickens District. And the Pickens District covered Eastern Division is now modern day Pickens County, and the Western Division is now modern day Oconee County. So I checked those both of those censuses for Pickens County and Oconee County, and I cannot find Clark. However, when I went down to the state archives a couple of years ago, I just took a chance and looked at the auditor's duplicate tax books. And lo and behold, I found Clark in 1870 paying his poll tax. And the way that I know, to me, that I know for a fact that it was Clark is because right here where it says PC, and that stands for person of color. And they had these from... Um, I cannot remember how far these cover, but these books were great, great source of information for me. So now I wanna talk about kind of what I learned along the way of doing this research and also in working and helping people with their genealogy research. Is that first off, Oconee County was not, has not always been Oconee County. And if we go here to the South Carolina Department of Archives and History, they have this thing here of maps tracing the formation of counties. So for example, here we have, I'm just gonna click on districts. Now, way back in the 1700s, this area was known as the Pendleton District. And the Pendleton District consisted of what is now Anderson, Oconee, and Pickens. Excuse me. Um, yes, ma'am. We, we don't see what you're clicking on. Oh, um, you're not able to see my screen? 
see where it says Oconee County, but I don't see a map. Don't see a map. Oh, let's see. Oh, you still not seeing the district's map? Okay. I do. Okay, let me get back. Try unsharing and then resharing. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Thank you. Uh, okay, can you see it now? Yes. Thank okay, you. you're welcome. I'm sorry about that. I'm still getting used to doing these Zoom things. This is my first time doing one. Not a problem. <laughs> okay, so here we go. So here's the Pendleton District, and it's made up of what is now Anderson, Oconee, and Pickens. So I'm going to take and switch out and go back to my presentation. Here we go. Okay, so <clears throat> So there's that. And essentially with um, this area in particular is that um, I'll just give you a timeline of, of events. Uh, back prehistory to about 1769, this was Cherokee Indian Territory. Then from about 1769 to 1799, we were known as the 96th District, which essentially stretched from about Columbia area, mid part of state up to now this area. And then for a brief period from about 1791 to about 1800, we had this thing called the Washington District. You pretty much you blink and you miss it. And it was made up of Greenville, Anderson, Oconee, and Pickens. Then you had the Pendleton District, which I mentioned earlier. Then that devolved to become the Pickens District. And then finally, we have Oconee County. So essentially, your family could have been in Oconee County since the beginning. But the records for your relatives could be either in Charleston, Columbia down at the State Archives, in Greenville County, Anderson County, Pickens County, and then Oconee County. So it makes this area a little bit tricky to um, research. You also learned that fire and sticky fingers are not your friend. Mm -hmm. um, there are several places where I've tried to find information and found out that there was a fire or I went someplace and tried to look in a particular book and the book had the pages torn out because someone years ago decided to tear out the pages for themselves. So stuff like that happens. Mistakes are set up for a comeback. And I say this because when I first started doing my genealogy, I made the mistake of <clears throat> when I was writing down my female relatives, I did not use their surnames. I used their married name and a genealogist looked at all my work. And she said, no, you need to go back and fix that. And I said, yes, ma'am. And I understood why after she explained it to me. So yeah, mistakes make you upset, but they're always a great starting point for a comeback. And I always expect the unexpected. Again, in my case, I never thought I was going to be able to find Clark in anything stating that he was here in the 1870s. But lo and behold, just taking a wild guess and looking at a particular role of microfilm, I found him. So now here are some state records of interest. One of them is the um, 1868 voter registration book. This series contains records with a name and race of each registered male voter. And let me click on that and give me one second to share it. That is it. This. Okay, can everyone see it okay? Okay, so this is from the South Carolina Digital Library. And click on browse. And what I'm going to do is set this up for title descending. And here is Oconee County. And this is a pretty much a list of all the registered voters in the area. And where my family is from is known as the Center Township. And even though this is a fantastic resource, like it has it divided by the different races, names, and it's very pretty, it's a pretty document. And, but Clark wasn't in here either. So I was very frustrated, but I still keep in mind with this. All right, back to the PowerPoint. Okay. 
Now, you also have um, birth records. Now, South Carolina as a whole did not start doing birth records as a whole until 1915. And the birth records for South Carolina, like I said, start 1915. However, recently, well, fairly recently in the genealogy world, the state has started releasing birth records that are 100 years old from what I have seen. So currently you can access 1915 to 1921 from the South Carolina Department of Archives. And you can also access um, the birth records from 1915 to 1919 on ancestry. Marriage records too also started in South Carolina. 1915 is when they start recording these. But Oconee County has marriage records starting in 1911. And you can either come up here to Oconee and go to probate court and view those records, or if you're down at the state archives, they have copies of the marriage um, records from 1911 to 1950 on microfilm there. Other state records of interest are South Carolina death records. Again, the records started in 1915. However, when you look at Ancestry, it does state the 1800s. I cannot remember the exact date, but their starting date of the 1800s. But that was because different areas in South Carolina did their own thing. So a lot of those records are from Charleston, and I believe also there are some from Spartanburg County. So death records in South Carolina are released every 50 years and can be accessed from Ancestry, from Family Search, and then there's also certain libraries that actually purchase the microfilm from the state archives. And those libraries that I know of that are close by are the Pickens County Library System and the Greenville County Library System. However, the, there are also these things called a delayed death certificate. And you have to request those directly from DHEC. They are not microfilmed. At least at the time that I have found out about this information, they are not microfilmed. And that's under um, South Carolina Regulation 61-1916, Section 19B. Um, certificates of death filed one year or more after the death, date of death shall be marked delayed. And records from 1973 to present um, can only be um, requested from immediate family members. So in my case, I had tried to make a request for a record that was for my great grandmother. However, they rejected that request and said that my another relative closer to that would have to make the request. So for example, if I want my great grandmother's death record, I would have to get my father to send in a request. Now, divorce records. South Carolina does have divorce records, um, but for the longest time, South Carolina did not have divorce. And it wasn't until 1872 that it was made legal, but it was only legal until 1878. And then divorce was suspended in 1878. And then a uh, state constitutional amendment was made in 1898 that basically prohibited divorce. Divorce was not permitted in South Carolina again until it was amended in 1849 and only permitted divorce on grounds of adultery, desertion, physical cruelty, and habitual drunkenness. And uh, to obtain a copy of a divorce decree, you would have to contact the clerk of court in the county where the divorce was filed. And the uh, whole thing that got me started on this was because, and I had forgot to put this in my um, um, sources, but in this volume of the South Carolina Historical Magazine, it's a little bit hard to see. Uh, this is the January 1997 issue. There was an article written by Janet Hudson that talks about the history of divorce in South Carolina. Okay, now we're going to talk about some of the Pacific Oconee County records. Um, before I go any further, are there any other questions that anybody has before I move on? Uh, yes, this is Gwen Anthony. Um, yes, ma'am. You mentioned delayed death certificates. What about delayed birth certificates? That I do not know, to be honest with you. That's something I haven't had a chance to research. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. But I am... I'm, you know, I definitely can double check to see if there is a delayed birth certificates. Yeah. Um, if you make sure to leave your name or email in the chat and I'll work on that and I'll get back with you. Thank you so much for that question.
Okay, do we have any other questions? Okay, moving on. Okay, now the Oconee County records that we have here, um, not in the library, but you can access from <clears throat> down at Pine Street, which is where our um, county offices are located at. Um, we have the Register of Deeds, mortgages and plats from about 1868. Again, that's when Oconee County formed, but you might can find some records that are a bit earlier than that, but not entirely too sure to present. And you also can do um, record searches online. Um, let me switch this out. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, can everyone see this register deed search box? Okay, so I'm going to search just right quick for my grandfather who is deceased. So here we have different records. And if you see this plus sign here, that means you actually can view the document. So there we go. And what I love about this is that I actually get to see his signature, which is not on this one. But that's his mother, Mariah Walker. That was his mother. Pacoya was his sister. And then Lulu um, Williams is also his sister. And then, of course, we have um, probate court, which has um, estate files dating from the mid 1850s to present. And they also have, again, the marriage licenses from 1911 to present. Uh, one thing I did find when I was doing my personal research is that I was trying to find a particular will for Mr. Sheeler. And the will was recorded in the probate court's office, but the will was missing. And the clerk at the time told me that during that particular time period when he died, he died in the late 1800s, was that the will would be recorded at the probate office, but then the lawyer would take it back to his office, and that's where it was at. And so I do not know where his will is, so maybe one day I'll find it, maybe I won't, who knows. And then again, like I had mentioned earlier, if you're trying to find records for Oconee County before 1868, again, it's going to be in either Pickens, Greenville, Anderson, Oconee, I mean, not Oconee, uh, Charleston, and that type of thing. Now, the Pacific collections that we have here at the uh, Wahala Library, this is where the <clears throat> uh, Ann Rogers Memorial um, room is located at. Um, we have a map collection of an assortment of photocopied and actual maps covering the colonial period to about the 1970s. Um, again, like I had mentioned that this area was known as the Cherokee Territory, but we did have a, a British um, fort here called Fort Prince George. And if you're familiar with this area, there's a we have Duke Energy here and it's located somewhere around in that area and it's currently under underwater when they made the lakes. So we have some stuff about that, that, that particular period and then up to, again, like the 1970s. Um, in this area, we did have the lakes constructed, um, Lake Kiwi and Hartwell in Oconee County and then Lake Jocassi over in Pickens County. And so we have some maps that detail that area before the lakes came in and then some maps about after the lakes. Now, the book collection that we have here in um, our historical room, we have about 1,900 books. Um, various things from some church histories, city directories. The city directories kind of have an interesting gap. We have some there, like I believe it's in the 70s, and then it jumps to the 2000s, late 90s, 2000s. And then, of course, we have our family history books. And just this is an example of some of the things that we have that deal particularly with African American um, interest. We have the Flat Rock Baptist Church 100th anniversary program. Um, we have the uh, centennial celebration of the Sunday School and BTU convention. Um, and this Seneca River Missionary Baptist Association is still going strong. And then we have another centennial yearbook about the Missionary Baptist Association. What's interesting about these two works is that this one um, has my great aunt, a picture of my great aunt in it. And this one mentions one of my uncles who's still alive and kicking and everything and that stuff of that nature. This book here is about Blue Ridge High School and that was the African-American school in Oconee County. 
And then this book here is called The Sizemore Family of Pickens, South Carolina. This particular book I found out when I worked over in the Pickens County Library System at the Easley Library. And this book is one of the few books that I know of that's actually an African-American genealogy that's in the public library collection. I think it's the only one that we have here in Oconee. And what's special about this family is that this family, I cannot find a slave ancestor. They show up actually in the 1850 census, the 1860 census, and so forth. And the reason why Oconee has a copy of it, because the man who wrote this book, I believe, his name was Samuel, I believe, Malone. He had His family started out in Pickens County, but then they move, uh, one family member moved to Oconee County, another one moved to Gaffney. So that's how we ended up with our copy. And then another book that I forgot to take a photo of is that Seneca had a um, college for African-Americans known as the Seneca Institute, Seneca College. And this is this book right here. And actually I did have um, my great aunts, um, my grandfather's um, sisters attended. And one of them in particular, Pacolia, um, she was the one who obtained her um, teaching educa uh, education, and she became a teacher in the area. Now, this is what is Oconee is known for. If you're in the genealogy community, um, we have this massive newspaper index, massive. And the picture for this presentation, there's a picture of the, I took a picture of the car catalog, and that's a whole wall just of card index files. Now, originally the in the newspaper index started out with just the Kiwi Courier, which was one of the oldest papers in South Carolina until it ceased publication a couple of years ago. Started in 1849, I believe. And it was indexed by a local historical society and, and covered up to about the 1970s. Then it was later donated to the library. Mrs. Ann Rogers was a library volunteer and she dedicated thousands upon thousands of hours indexing these newspapers. And I believe from what I can figure is that she further increased the coverage because originally it started out with just the Kiwi Courier, but we had multiple other papers in the area at the time. And what makes this index especially fascinating is that she covered births, marriages, deaths, divorces, marriage licenses, and anniversaries, and it covers from 1849 to 2010s. Also, this record also includes all the African-American entries that can be found. And on April 14, 2016, the South Carolina Room was formally named in her honor. Um, she passed the year before, back in 2015. Okay, so this is what the newspaper index covers. We have the Kiwi Courier, and the reason why I have these little tildes in here is because the newspaper has gaps in it, and so we just basically just do the start and do the end. So have the Kiwi Courier. Now the Kiwi Courier you can access online. You can access through the Historical Newspapers of South Carolina or through Chronicling America, which Virginia was very instrumental in having done. And then also you can access it on newspapers.com, but it only covers 1849 to 1922. And originally the reason why it stopped at 1922, because when Chronicling America got kicked off and started in Virginia, you can correct me on this, is that that was when public domain ended. It was 1922, that's where it ended, and then everything else was under copyright still. And Chronic America has been updating and adding more stuff, but when it comes to certain South Carolina newspapers, it's not been a whole lot with the Kiwi Couriers, things like that done. Then we have this other newspaper here called Farm and Factory. That has initially covered the Seneca area, and it was later bought out by the what's now the Seneca Journal. Then we had the Tolo Tribune, which covered mainly the Westminster area. And again, it was later bought out by the Seneca Journal. Then we have the Seneca Journal, and the Westminster News. And these you can only access through microfilm. You can either access them here at Oconee County or you can access them down in Columbia at the South Carolina Library. And I believe maybe Clemson University may have some copies. So basically, if you have a name of a relative or you're trying to find, you can give us a call, send me an email 
and I can check that index and see if they're in the index and nine times out of 10 if they're in there, then we actually can find the actual article that we're looking for. Of course, there are some because it's human created, you know, there's human errors and mistakes. Sometimes they have the right date, but the wrong newspaper or the wrong date in the right newspaper. So I still will take a search around to make sure. This is an example of one of the drawers. As you can see, the drawers vary from being either halfway full or this one is totally packed from end to end. Now, the reason why I had an asterisk by African American is because all of African American entries are listed as Negro. So that's just how it was just done at that time. And Ms. Rogers still kept that going, you know, even until she finished. And this person, for example, is um, Joseph Alonzo uh, Benson. He's one of my relatives on the Benson line. And he actually died in New York and uh, is buried here in South Carolina. And one story my dad told me about him, because I had never heard of this person until I had started doing some genealogy. Because when I started doing the genealogy myself, I started learning these different names and different people I had never heard of. And my father said that he Joseph would come down from New York to visit during the summer, I believe it was, and he would pay them five dollars cash money to wash his car. And my dad said they just loved him for that because um, a lot of people know that five dollars could buy you a whole lot of candy and sodas back then. So they just loved him to death. Now, also, Mrs. Rogers did a cemetery index. And it's very detailed. And also she did all the African-American churches and cemeteries as well. And in um, <clears throat> the 2000s, a man by the name of Paul, Paul Kankula, his friend Gary Flint and a group of other volunteers also did cemetery uh, surveys of Oconee County as well. So Oconee um, is interesting in that we have technically three um, cemetery indexes. We have a cemetery book that was done back in the 1980s, but for some reason they omitted all of the African American churches and cemeteries in that particular book. So then you have Miss Rogers who taken did her index that covered all the African American churches and cemeteries. And now you have um, Paul Kankula's, which was done back in the 2000s. And let me just show you it right quick. Do. Okay, so this is everything that Paul Kankula and his friends did. So you can go down and find a church. So for, for our sake, ah, St. Paul, well, let's see. Nope, that's not gonna help me. Let's see, fair play. Do, do, do. Sorry if I'm making anybody sick with looking, scrolling through this, because sometimes it makes me a little nauseous. Here we go. This is St. Paul Baptist Church, and it's located about in Fair Play area. And this is the family church for my for the Walker line. And if we go down. Here we go. Move this down a bit. See, here we go. This is Miss Bacoya Walker. She married a Jones. And she was the daughter of Warren and Mariah uh, Benson. And then further on down, we have all of these Walkers. My grandfather, Belton, his wife, Iris, my uncle, LJ, Mariah, his mother, and so forth. Chat. Hmm? Okay. So I actually like having all these different resources because as you know, cemeteries sometimes end up becoming lost and desecrated and damaged. And so we actually have a way of pretty much having a way of, of having a time capsule of what was there during different time periods. And this is an example of a cemetery index card. This particular lady here, Isaiah 
Keys Walker. She was my great aunt and she passed away back in 2002 and she was in her uh, 90s at the time. And when Miss Rogers did the index for her, only person that was there at the time was just her husband, Jay Van, on the, he was the only one that had passed. But on the marker, it did have her birth date. And now if we were to update this, we would include Aunt Zella's death date. And then also this other thing I want to show is this is not out just with the cemetery cards, but also with the newspaper index cards, is that what Miss Rogers and the other volunteers did was that they would also say, see this other surname. And you would basically go and check this other card and it will have the other the information that you're looking for. Okay. Now, whoop, move this over. Now we're gonna talk a little bit just about what's available at the state archives. Um, for those that have had a chance to go to state archives, it's an amazing space, great resource. And I, every time I go down there, I always find something new and interesting. But I do recommend that when you go to visit to make sure that you have a clear goal for your research. One thing that always happens is that you become, I think, a bit research drunk, I like to call it, where you take in a little bit too much and you end up not accomplishing anything. So if you do have a plan, go always go in with a plan. I typically like to have something that I'm overarching looking for and then something simpler that I will find something and the reason why I do that is because if I can find that simple thing and I'm geared up to find the more difficult thing supplies that you will need that I recommend is always having writing supplies like a tablet or a pc I mean laptop um time because time just gets away from you in there um patience and also bring a sweater and the reason why I say that is because it's very cold in there it's great during the summer, but during the fall and winter, ooh, it's, it's, it's freezing in there. And you could tell because this is a picture that was taken during the, um, the, the South Carolina Genealogical Society has a genealogy workshop every summer. And way back here is me freezing because I did not bring my sweater with me when I went into the storage room this particular day. <laughs> so now I'm going to take in show you a few things. I'm just going to get ready in a second. All righty. So the State Archives has, like I said, a lot of different things. So one thing that they have is a listing of their digital records. And where did it say that? Here we go. This is a list of the things that they have that um, you can access. And this is specifically stuff for Oconee County. So we have um, register and means and conveyances, basically the deed books, and they cover from about 1868 to 1926. And if you scroll on down, this is what they have for probate records. And this is where I found the things about the auto tax book, duplicate tax book. So they cover from 1868 to 1930. Okay, now, whoops, that's the wrong thing. Close that, close that, close that, close that. Okay, can everyone see this page? Okay, just want to make sure. All right, then uh, Archive has been working on digitizing their collection. And so <clears throat> you can take and do a search for a person's name for example, and this is again, uh, Joseph Sheeler. And these are different records that they have on him that have been digitized. And if there's an image, you can click on that and you can pull the image up. Here is um, Sally Sheeler. Um, she was the wife of Warren Sheeler. And this is her applying for a widow's pension for the Civil War. Uh, yeah. Um, the story is with um, Warren was after the war, he came back in very poor health and moved over to Anderson County. And I remember when I was trying to do initial research on them is that he came back over to visit over in Seneca, fell in front of the local hotel and then died not too long after that. Okay, now here's another thing from their archives. This is a 
summary of their collection holdings. So I like to come down here and just check things out. So they have state records and then local records and then county records and some municipal. And then you can click here and just go to the particular county that you want. So let's say, for example, I want to see if they had anything on Pendleton District. Click on the P's. They do have a few things. And so if I go down to the state archives, this is what I'll actually be able to see. And I'll let you know if it's on microfilm or if it's actual physical documents. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now back to this. All right. Um, whenever you're going anywhere to do research, be it a library or an archives, always keep records of how and what you discovered. You will thank yourself later on because um about that. Now, thankfully, I learned my lesson before this ever happened, but I have been told several genealogy nightmares where one person has I think she has well over a thousand some odd names in her records and now she has to go back and try to find the sources to actually document everything that she found and she's been doing the research for well over 30 40 years and yeah so I always make sure to take notes document and everything and then also I suggest if you go down to the state archives make a trip of it um spend time at the archives and then take and go visit Virginia down at the state library Okay, now this um, case here, this is one of my most interesting genealogy cases I ever had. And this started back when I was over working at the, again, the library over in Pickens County, the Easley branch. Uh, basically, I was contacted by a local genealogist who had found a photocopy of a newspaper article in one of her files. And it was of this lady named uh, Mrs. India Williams. And sometimes when you see her name, her name is spelled like the country or as it's here uh, on the screen. And like I said, found this in the article and um, there was no name of the paper, no date, nothing. And just her name and just won't try to find the article. Now the genealogist did provide me with a list of census records that Miss Williams showed up in. And that was it, but it stopped after like the 19, uh, I think teens is when it stopped. And I was trying to figure out, well, why is that? So, and then the genealogist basically just wanted to help trying to find the article and if I can find anything else yeah. out about her. Now, one thing I have not mentioned yet is that during this time, and it's slowly starting to happen again here, I had looked at the Pickens Sentinel, which is one paper in Pickens County, and the Easy Progress, which is another paper. I had looked at them so much that by the time that I had gotten this question, I could actually look at an article and tell you which paper it was based on the typeface. So I saw the article and she believed that it was from the Pickens Sentinel. And I was like, no, I think this is the Easy Progress. So I looked in the Easy Progress first. So what did I find during my research? I found Mrs. Williams in the missing census years, 1930, 1940. And essentially what happened was that she moved in with one of her her oldest daughter, and that's why she ended up there. I was also able to locate her death certificate. She died in the 1940s. I located her obituary. It was on the front page of the Easily Progress bottom corner. I also located an article that was in the Pickens Sentinel, which was a reprint of an article that was in the <clears throat> Uh, from the Greenville News. That was from 1940. Now, question is, people are wondering, you're probably wondering, like, why is this particular person of such an interest? Well, the interest behind her is this. Uh, Mrs. Williams was well over 100 plus years old when she was found. They had completed the 1940 U.S. Census and found that she was one of the oldest residents in the county. And also, Mrs. Williams was a former slave. So, and I will, and you'll see a photo of her in just a moment. Now in the article about her, she mentions the name of her first slave owner, a man by the name of Thomas Garvin. And when he died, his estate pretty much was sold off. 
So after I had found the article and everything, I said, I was curious to see if I could find his will. And thankfully, uh, Pickens County um, state papers, some of them are actually on ancestry. And so I looked up Thomas Garvin, found him, and then on the page of his sale of stuff that was being sold, India also knew the name of her second master, who was a man by the name of Robert Johnston. And you can see here a Robert Johnston purchasing one Negro girl, India, for 1000 looks like $1,380. My jaw hit the floor when I saw this because I had never in my life thought I would ever find the actual documentation of a person being a slave. Because all I have ever had, especially in my family, is just the stories that link me us to slavery. But this is actual proof of her being sold to another person. This is the photo of her that appeared in the newspaper. It appeared in the paper when they found her in the 1940 census. And this was a picture that was also used for her obituary. And over here is the article that had appeared in the Pick and Sentinel. And for the time period, I believe you can kind of say that it was a respectful article about her. You know, there's a bit things from the time period that a little bit questionable, but overall I found it to be pretty respectful. Because in the first paragraph, it says, India Williams, old and wrinkled and black, looks like a character out of Gone with the Wind. But her memory stretching back more than 100 years into the history of Upper South Carolina clashed with Margaret Mitchell's conception of the Old South. And from there, it goes on. It talks about how um, the plantation that she, that she resided on, um, it was broad acres of this plantation lay between what's central and north South Carolina, which is over in Pickens County. Further on, it goes on, talks about how her sons had started to work for the railroad and then moved up to North Carolina. And she basically told them, don't y'all get sick because I'm not going to come see you because you're too far away. She pretty much stayed just within the area. She did live over in Anderson County for a brief period of time, but then she moved back to Pickens County where she remained and then died. Um, one thing she mentioned about the war, Civil War in particular, is that she said, there was no war fighting around where I lived, but there was plenty of private fighting. And then what I found to be interesting is that uh, close to the last paragraph, it says, the years have brought dignity to India Williams. Today, she was a respected member of her community, and since the census has brought her attention outside of Easley as one of the oldest persons in the state, gifts such as Mother's Day, a Mother's Day box of candy from a white club have started coming to her. And in the very end, she just basically said that I've worked hard, and since I've been free, I ain't ever been without bread. I've just trusted in the Lord, she said. So to me, this was just my, my, my big, big find. Um, along with outside of Clark, it was like one of my biggest finds. And to this day, I always think about on this one and say, you know, if I try a little harder, if I dig a little deeper, I might can find more information. And um, it's pretty much just what drives me, drives me a lot, this story. So pretty much we have reached the end of our presentation. Um, I have all these resources that I use. I, like I said, always document everything, except for the divorce thing that I forgot to mention in my note, my um, resources, but everything else, everything. When you come to see me, you're going to leave with a photocopy of the title page of your book, the back of that title page, and then you, if you come here leading newspaper articles, you're not going to leave without the name of the newspaper and the date and the page number. And the way the index is set up, it also tells you the column. So you get the column listing as well. And here's some other resources. And this is information about from the library. Now I'm just going to go briefly to our web page right quick.
Okay, this is the Oconee County webpage. And if you're unable to reach me by phone, you can always come here to services, scroll down here to genealogy, um, reference services, genealogy and proctoring. I don't do proctoring. Um, and if you scroll here to where it says genealogy request form, you click on that and it's a Google form. You just fill out this information and I do my best to at least respond to you to let you know that I have received your request. But because of the number of requests I have started to receive and the amount of time it's taken me to do the research, it is taking me longer to um, find the information and respond back. So, but yeah, that's essentially it. So um, that's pretty much it. Um, do we have any other questions or concerns? We do, um, <clears throat> Quintel, that was fantastic. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, a couple of you asked questions. Now feel welcome to unmute yourself if you wanna ask a question verbally, but I'd be glad to read out um, uh, a couple of these and hopefully I'm not missing anybody. Okay, I see your request. Quintel? Yes, ma'am. It's Regina Vaughn from Philadelphia. Um, excellent presentation and glad to see some young person doing this research. Oh, yeah. thank, you. thank you very much. Um, that, that's what one people people have said to me is that, oh, you're so young. You, why, you, it's amazing that you're interested in this. And this is the way I view history. Um, there was an article some years ago and it was talking about the Kennedy assassination. And it said that the Kennedy assassination is moving away from memory into history. And essentially it says is that the people that actually remember that event are, are passing on and it's going into the history books. When I think about the civil rights era before desegregation and everything, people normally look at books. I look at my parents, my parents lived through that. And I want to do my best to try to record their experiences and pass those along to the next generation as best I can. And it's not just me, the Oconee History Museum, which the director, her name is Leslie Haggerty White, and her assistant curator is Jennifer Moss. They are both very diligent, diligently trying to increase the knowledge of African American history in Oconee County. And then our friends over at the Seneca Area Museums, in particular the Bertha Lee Strickland Museum and the Lunny Museum, uh, that's Shelby Henderson and Nick Mulvaney. They're working on trying to increase the knowledge of African American experience in Oconee County. So. Yeah, so we're very big on this and I'm very big on it myself. Well, good, good. I was just wondering, I'm in Philadelphia. Yes, ma'am. And um, I, need, I need somebody to go to Greenwood County Courthouse. So I was wondering, do you do any work like that? I do not, but from what I can remember, if you contact the Greenville, the Greenwood Library directly, they may be able to put you in contact with someone that can do that for you. Okay. Because they okay, have I'll a- that. they, That's what yeah. I keep asking. Don't you know somebody? Because yes, you know, I got to pay to fly down there. So it's not like I'm asking anybody to do this for free. Yes, <laughs> oh, yes, my mind. Yes, sir. There's, there's a, uh, the person that just asked the question, go to Robin Robin book. Uh, she got a lot, did a lot of research from Greenwood, South Carolina. All right. Can you put her name in the chat? Okay, yeah, she just finished her book and, and she got and she got a lot of relative in Greenwood. Well, that's why, thank you, Mr. Bryan. That's why, the not that his presentation wasn't excellent, but yes, that's the uh, main reason why I got on there. I got to yeah. find somebody that can go to these archives for me. Well, <laughs> try some of her books and some, uh, some of her research. She has done a lot of research. Yeah. But, 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 the, I, yeah. but, and, but like us. Uh, but like I said, I definitely would contact the Greenville, Greenville Library. They have um, a historical room, a very nice historical room down there. At their... Can you put that in the chat since somebody else might be listening? Or Virginia, can you put that in the chat for them? Yeah. I'm sure. Um, chat. Was that a list of the archives or? No, he said Greenwood. Greenwood. I can put the Greenwood Public Library in there. Yes, ma'am. Is that what you're talking about, Quintel? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, because that that's we're leaving the chat open because you can save the chat with these resources. Okay, here is a link to the Greenwood County Library, and this okay. should take you directly to their research. Would you put the link for the Sumter County Library in there as well? Thank you. Yes, ma'am, yeah. I can give me that in a quick moment, Sumter County Library. 
Quintel, you're faster than me. I'm trying to keep up with you. <laughs> well, both of you are probably faster than me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> and that's so many people started opinion. in South Carolina. You search Greenwood, you might end up in Greenwood, Indiana. And so you have to put SC in there. Thank you. Anytime I put Fairfield, it comes up Connecticut. <laughs> hey, I just put sure. I just put a link for the Sumter County Library. Yes, I see that. And I also see Mr. Bryant's um, link as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and Virginia, I'm doing a presentation on Newberry. Is that something you would put on your newsletter? Um, for the Delaware chapter of ALTS, ALTS is a, a national uh, black, his, uh, black genealogical group. That's great. Um, we can, um, I'll get in touch with you about it. You um, shared your information, um, Ms. Vaughn? Yeah. yeah, I sent okay. you my email. Thank you. Um, I'll reach out to you and see um, how we can share that out. Okay. Okay. There was a request for me to put up the information about Ms. Williams again. So let me see. Uh, here we go. Doo -doo -doo. I will eventually under learn how to do this stuff with this. Oh, you're doing great. Go. Great job. Okay. So, Don't worry, Quintel. We see your citizens learn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here are the resources I had for Miss India Williams. Um, basically, this is what I was found in the newspaper besides what you can find about um, Thomas Garvin. There was a question about her saying if she had any siblings. That part I didn't research, to be honest with you. I'm not sure if she had any siblings. I do know that in her obituary, it says, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, it just mainly just mentions her children. And it said at the time that when she passed, she was 113 years old. Wow. Um, Mr. Wilson had a couple of great questions. Let me pull up closer to where his question was. Let's see. He said, uh, did you find records of your family members who lived in Oconee County at one time, but then moved to other counties in South Carolina? If so, uh, what were the counties they moved to? I know you mentioned Anderson, which is nearby. I do know that some of my relatives moved over to Anderson County. And the only way I've been able to do it myself is through a name and then looking at the census record. Again, like, like I said, when I first started doing this genealogy stuff, the reason why I got into in genealogy was when I was at the Pickens County Library System, I was uh, voluntold to be a member of a board. And the board was something called the Reunion of Country Families. And it was an event that was held at Southern Wesleyan University where they, it was basically like a genealogy swap meet. They would have these different people representing different families and um, to come and people from all over would come over and just, just listen to them talk and they had different speakers. And this particular year, they decided to do the reconstruction period as their thing. And mind you, I was still in my, yeah, I was still in my mid twenties. So I was the youngest person at the table and the only African-American at the table. And I happened to open my mouth and said, oh, well, my great great grandfather got this land and, uh, and then my great grandfather added to this land, like this land that Clark had originally obtained. Somewhere or another, my great grandfather, I believe, added to it so that we have over close to 200 acres of land in the Walker family. And that land is still within the family to this day. It's basically passed down from generation to generation. So for example, my father has a share of the land and when he passes, that land will be given to me and my sister to divide. And when we pass, should we not have any children, then that land just gets redistributed among all the other living relatives. So I opened my mouth and said this, and then they said, well, you need to talk about that. And at that time, I did not do public speaking. I refused to do it. I said, well, I'll contact an uncle. And the uncle um, said was willing to do it, but he said, you have to help me with the research. So that's when I start doing all this work. And then my dad mentions some names. And one of the names he mentioned, he said, well, can you find anything on Mexico? I said, the country? He said, no, that's a, that's your aunt. I said, you mean to tell me I had a relative named Mexico? He said, yeah, she was a And I said, I 
I just laughed at my dad and said, no way, no way, no way. Look in the census. There she is with her family, Mexico Benson. And she moved over to Anderson County. <laughs> and uh, she was a school teacher there. And then I had a couple of relatives that have gone up to New York. And I, again, I haven't done too much research with that. But hopefully I'll be able to find them in census records and then newspaper articles and stuff like that. So I, th I think I got a little bit off topic on that on the question. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I am. Um, but yeah, for the way I've tried to find relatives is basically through um, names, uh, the census record, and then I try to find news articles and other things to try to verify where they moved to. And sometimes you get lucky and hit the nail on the head. And other times you just have to work work around it until you can find it. And okay. I'll just add that searching in Ancestry, people transcribe it and they may not have seen the word Mexico. They may have said, spelled it a different way. And so then um, you may think they're not in there. So it takes a little bit of looking and doing around the other pages. Mm -hmm. It's something that we do for people um, looking up. Oh, yes. Um, thanks for that. Um, Mr. Wilson asked another question. Uh, he said, thank you for mentioning the 1868 voter registration. He found his relative, but he could not find him in the 1870 U.S. federal census. For that particular period of time, do you recommend any other resources to explore? If the person's from South Carolina, I would definitely try those. Um, well, it depends on where, where you, if, if you're, if the person's from Oconee County, I would definitely try those duplicate tax books because um, that's how I found my relative. But with other people, I would just have to try to figure it out something myself and see if I could figure out an answer for a different county. Because sometimes I would, but I would definitely check the state archives and see if they have something along those lines of particular county records. And um, Virginia, it may not be 1870s, uh, but pardon me, somebody talk? Uh, yeah, that the person just spoke. What county was that? Yeah, um, which well, county was was that about asking about the relative that didn't show up in 1870? Mr. Wilson, are you still there? Let's see if I can unmute you. I don't know if he's mentioned it. Um, we can come back. If he's, he's stating Lexington. It's in the chat, Lexington. Oh, thank you. Okay, thank oh, you. Lexington. Oh, the reason why I asked that question because there are some South Carolina county county um, censuses. So, mm -hmm. but I I don't know there for every county. That's why I asked the question. For example, I'm I'm in Newberry, so uh, there is one for Newberry the 1870 county census. So that's where I found my relative. And to be honest, just to tell people I found the person there, then I was able to find them on Ancestry. Great. You know. Thank you for sharing that. Yes. And I didn't realize Newberry had one. Charleston's a bigger city and I believe um, they had an alternate census and there's a state yeah. census in some years. Yeah. Um, well, I put in in the chat for you, Virginia. The um, the Dutch Fork Historical Society has a beautiful book that they put together. Have you ever seen it? It sounds familiar. I think um, we get donations like that all the time. Um, yes, please put the title in, and if we don't have it, I'll try to get it. Yeah, Thank I'll you. put it in there for you. Thank you so much. A couple of other people. Um, um, Miss Johnson. Oh, pardon. Oh, oh, sorry. Going Go back it. to. Um, the question about the Lexington, give me one second. I was just taking a look at the um, <clears throat> the state archives. And down here with the auditor, it looks like there are duplicate tax books for Lexington as well. Covering 1868 to 1920. For, it worked for me. You might can give that a shot too. Seeing if the relative might show up there. Because like Clark, Clark, I couldn't find him from 1870. So it's, I kind of, I, I feel like a kindred spirit now <laughs> having <laughs> with a person that's had a difficulty trying to find that 1870 relative. Okay. Appreciate y'all leaving so much good feedback and questions in here. I'm trying to make sure I don't miss. Um, oh, and let me put in my email address. Uh, Catherine and Cynthia at the Lawrence Library here, could we mention one resource that we have? Please do. 
thanks for asking, but um, always just jump in on our talks. <laughs> yes. Hi. Um, don't know if you can see us, but we both been working at the Lawrence Library since dirt. <laughs> we know a whole lot, but, uh, but it, it one thing, uh, I think Washington District did cover Lawrence County, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I caught that. But uh, we have a nice lady named Robin Coon, and she's been doing all of these cemetery books. I don't know if you can see it. Yes, ma'am. She has done all of these herself, and she not only has the cemetery information, she has obituaries, she has death certificates, she has the church programs in there. She has every bit of information that she can find on these people, and we've got over 50 of these. Some of the churches are up to like three volumes, right? but... Um, I don't know how many churches, I, I didn't think to do that before I uh, we started listening to your um, webinar, but uh, it's just a wealth of information there. If in this all of Lawrence County, she does skip over a little bit to Greenville County and probably Newberry, um, but it's just wonderful. And her contact information is on the record, the catalog record, I may try to make sure that that, well, that is there for anybody that's interested. Could you type that in the chat for me, uh, her name? Okay. Yeah, Miss Coon, can you put that in the chat? Sure. See, what I'm doing is why I keep asking that. I keep say, I'm saving the chat. Great. Okay. All are right, those, I'll do are that. Are books digitized yet, or are they just still in hard copy? Uh, she does this herself, and mm -hmm. she's, they're all the little, um, what do you call it? Spiral. Spiral bound. And uh, I believe if you contact her, she will sell you uh, these. But she she does this as a courtesy to us. She brings them, and I catalog. I do original cataloging on them, and that's that's a challenge sometimes. Right. Yeah. But I'll, I'll put her information in there. But most of them are like this one's Duncan Creek Baptist Church, uh, Lawrence um, A to G, known burials. Is what she has in there, and uh, I'll just go ahead and sit that, put that in, uh, um, type that in now. That'd be great. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you. And I'll and I we both enjoyed your presentation. Right. And, and oh well, thank you. Everyone's leadership there. Right. All right, we're gonna mute ourselves now. <laughs> thank you so much for sharing that. And um, oh, I've been to the Lawrence branch. I went there years ago to hear a um presentation from LaBrenda Brent. Britson. LaBrenda Garrett Nelson. She yes, is yes, yes. Uh, she was born at the same hospital I was. She's a, <laughs> a native of Lawrence. Brent Holcomb is a native of Lawrence. Mm -hmm. And Max Golden, most of her ancestors come from here. So mm -hmm. so she's yeah, we we've got a lot to, to claim. Yeah. <laughs> they yes. all they all have lots of material to share. And they've been uh great to donate it to our South Carolina room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Okay, I'll type that in. I'm gonna. We're gonna shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. A lot of genealogists are very generous with their research, and um, we always appreciate that. And if you ever know of a, you know, copies, the State Library would love to have copies of um, these types of records. We're trying to build up local histories. It's the perfect thing to share with somebody. I know one thing I'm looking for for this area is that I'm I would love to have more um, family histories because uh, again like I said the only one that I know of that we have in our collection is the Sizemore book and there are two others that I'm planning to make copies of that I have from different parts of my family um we're also related to the Keys family and then we're also related to this family called the Mucklevins and um, I don't know too much about them but they did some books a couple of years ago, so I want to try to get copies of those made to put in our collection so we can have them here at the library. Great. Has any um, DNA helped in, in your research? I actually have tried the DNA, and unfortunately, the only thing I know about DNA is that it stands for the deoxyribose nucleic acid. Because when I try to look at the results, it just goes straight above my head. <laughs> But I did do family, I did um, uh, family tree DNA, and I did the um, 
I can't remember which one for the why, how far out I went, but I also went back and had the, did the, uh, I think the, no, I did autosomal, which the autosomal from what I've heard, is just, it does everything in you. And then I went and did the Y DNA. And I did see a map, a world map of where my D DNA is from, and a lot of it's in Africa, but I also found some over in the Iberian Peninsula that's around Spain. And then at that time, it said I had two percent, like a, a certain percent that was Scandinavian. I said, how in the world did I get that in my family? And then a lot of um, some German and then, of course, um, English. So, but one day I do plan to open that back up and try to see if I can figure the things out. Great. The Genealogy Society workshop that you mentioned that happens in July every year in South Carolina, uh, the time I went a few years ago, that, that's what they focused on. It was really interesting. So if you don't know anything about it, it was great to come hear somebody try to explain it and um, and talk about the results and what they mean. So there's probably places to find that out. Uh, and that's for everybody. I wasn't telling you, Quintel, because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you already know all that. <laughs> I think what cracks me up with the DNA is that I can understand the, inter the intricacies of all these different counties and all these different districts. But when it comes to DNA, it just goes straight above my head. It's like my mind just can't process it. <laughs> but thank you for that question. Yeah, I plan to dig more into the DNA. Um, did you find any genetic cousins from the autosomal portion like did, that you didn't know that you have? And did that help you with any of your research? I think I did find some relic, some um, genetic matches, but at that time I was still pretty much new to it, and I wanted to focus on doing the um, old-fashioned paper research before I got into the, the DNA. Gotcha. So I'm hoping to go back and actually incorporate the DNA into my actual paper research. Got it. Uh, Mr. Bryant, thanks for sharing Robin Foster's um, new book, and she was one of our speakers just a couple of months ago. She did a great mm -hmm. job. Um, and we're getting that for our collection as well. So um, let's see. And thanks, Miss. Do you, how do you say, is it Vizdos? Um, pretty close, Vizdosh, Slovak. Vizdos. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Um, thanks for sharing um, that you moved down here from New Jersey to North Carolina. That's great. And um, the research that you've been doing. That's great. Um, so reach out anytime. I know we're neighbors now. And um, if you, um, have any questions we can get you in contact with different librarians and archivists around here too and that goes for everybody you're asking about different libraries and stuff so um some of us have contacts and know each other that would be glad to share I, the library or the person so. while it's on my mind because i see that um miss vizdos you're with them the dar it looks like yes. um I want to mention that South Carolina is taking part in what's called the 250th anniversary for the American Revolution. It's going to cover several different years from about the time of the early battles to about the time when the Treaty of Paris was signed. And Oconee County, like it's a statewide initiative, each county is doing different things, and Oconee County is taking part in that. So you um, may want to contact your local library system to see if they're taking part in it. Because I know that well, the thing with Oconee is that we didn't have a whole lot happen up here battle-wise. We did have a couple skirmishes here and there, but a lot of our history comes pretty much after the revolution. Um, one of the things that I mentioned in there that I, I was asked to join the specialty research group is to help find undiscovered patriots. And um, there is, you know, all backgrounds and all ethnicities that contributed to America's freedom. And that's one of the things that um, I've been working on for the last four years and now working with Ray Shirani, who's working under Dr. Gates. Um, I was asked to join her team and um, it, it's, it took everyone to, to win the battle. And that is, and I believe down in the South, it's, it's very hard to, um, find patriots or people who contributed to the to the cause, whether it be in battle or in patriotic service. So that's one thing that um, I'm interested in learning about. And I know that Clemson has started um, a program and, and research on the the people that were enslaved on the, on the property and the land there. So it's a very interesting and very 
um, all encompassing project to mm -hmm. learn everyone's history. And so you, you've provided great resources here today. Oh, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I, one thing I'd like to say in, um, is that it was at my mother's knee that I first learned about genealogy. And a lot of people, well, a lot of resources omit not just African Americans, but they also omit women as well. And that's something I want to try to work work hard on too, is making sure that we have good representation of the women that contributed to history and genealogy as well. So just want to put that out there. Um, Virginia? Yes, ma'am. Um, I wanted to go back to Lawrence County and they mentioned LaBrenda Garrett's book. Do you have that in your um, library? Oh, yes. That looks real familiar. Um, let me yes. make sure. You said LaBrenda Garrett's? Yes, the people from Lawrence County mentioned it. What yes. is, she's yes. an attorney? turn genealogist and yes, it's very right. professional and since Lawrence County anybody's doing their South Carolina work particularly upcountry knows how the county boundaries um, um, change so Lawrence County is next to Newberry but the thing about her book the resources that she gives is unbelievable and I forgot to mention there was an 1869 South Carolina state population census. So she has reference to that in here as well. Um, very, do you have it, Virginia, in your uh, work? I believe if we don't have it yet, we've ordered it because the cover looks really familiar and um, we might have ordered that this summer. Yeah, but that sure is a good out. resource for anybody in any of those counties because you know how the yeah. county boundaries. Uh, What's the name of the book and the title? A Guide to Researching African American Ancestors. Uh, Quintel, can you, since you're quick on that computer, in Lawrence County, South Carolina, and it's LaBrenda Garrett Nelson. Can you put that in the chat for me? Oh, I'm one step ahead of you, ma'am. We have a copy of it here at our library. Yeah, but can you put it in the chat for everybody? Yes, ma'am. I'll do the direct link to the library. Thank you. Oh. So well, here's the went. one in the library, and then I will, I know the book is available, I think, from Amazon, so yes. I'll do an Amazon link as well. Yeah, I got that to say, you got people from all over the country listening to you today, so. There we go. All right, yes. so we have where it's at in the our library system and where you can purchase it from Amazon. Yes, I definitely would recommend that. It's a great okay. resource. It's a great resource. Thank you so much for mentioning these book titles because that's one of the um, one of my jobs and probably your job, Quintel, that we want to have these important works in our collections. And so, raising awareness um, and knowing they exist to order for the for the library is really good. So, thank you for mentioning it. Thank you very much. I, I love getting to talk to people and learn things. And a lot, what I've learned a lot is just to sit and listen. And that's the most important thing. I, I've had some people come in who were, I'll never get it. It was when I was first learning how to do this particular type of research. And this lady came in and she needed help trying to find a relative. And he had was in the 1700s. So we pulled out every book I could figure out, couldn't find it. And then, could, and we just couldn't find them. And she broke down crying. And she mm -hmm. said that she had went to another library system somewhere and they told her just to give up. And I said that I will hope that I never reach that point in my life where I tell someone just to give up because the thing is, we know this now, especially with this digital age, is that stuff just is, comes up just anywhere and everywhere. And you just have to keep looking and keep trying. And then some days you don't find it and other days you do find it. Um, sometimes I do wonder if I do want to actually find that, figure out that answer to the question because of um, that, that hunt just keeps you going. It keeps you keeps your mind sharp and everything like that and from what I've also seen from the genealogists I have spoken with over the years is that a lot of them say the same thing oh I wish so-and-so was still alive so I can ask them this question and that question but in the end they also end up saying like you know I just wish I just had a moment just to talk to them and just tell them I love them again and that's something that I really have grown more attentive with genealogy is that I've taken more time to appreciate my family while I have them and there's part of me that just wants to go and ask them all these questions and stuff, but I just want to just enjoy them while they're here. And I'll just beat myself up for not asking those questions, but right now I want to be able to have the memories of all the good times with them. 
Okay. Well, we just have a couple more minutes and I know we've gone over um, um, all y'all's time is so valuable. Um, thanks for leaving all this great feedback because uh, I'll just go quickly through. Um, Mr. Bryant, thanks for saying you've done extensive research on the Sam Pitt community and that's a small community in Georgetown. I've heard of them. It's great. I hope you found some good things. Um, uh, Laura from Schaefer Memorial Library. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And um, let's see, Miss Vaughn, Newberry County, 1876. Let's see. Miss Johnson wrote, can you put the info for the article about divorce in the chat? Um, I did upload the slides, um, Quintel, would that, that the slides have that information or? No, they do not. Give me one second, okay. I have to type it out. South Carolina okay. Historical Magazine. Thank uh, you. January 1997. And then it's five. There's a long title, but mm -hmm. so I'll just put just um it starts off with um from the constitution. From constitution dot dot dot. Janet Hudson, and it starts on page. Yep, 75, 75 through. And Virginia, and can, I think you may have copies of this. We, we do, and I can make a copy for you of um, that source that Quintel is sharing. We have the South Carolina Genealogy and History Magazine. It goes way back. Um, Ms. Stiles wrote, DNA has been extremely beneficial to my research. This is how we're able to determine our ancestors from Williamsburg County, South Carolina. The DNA matches were most helpful. Ancestry has the most people, so they produce the most DNA relatives. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. And um, Ms. Anthony said, Quintel, you are an inspiration. Thank you. That's really sweet. <laughs> you Thank are. you very much. Um, we I, will have, be, I, I have one more question um, with the libraries and the archives. Do any of you, or has anybody developed genealogy programs for children or for young adults to inspire and encourage them to do research? There's this thing called Ask Granny. Mm -hmm. And it was some program that was started, um, not in South Carolina, it was another person had created this thing called Ask Granny, where it gets... Uh, it's like a genealogy thing where you, you have young people and they can interview their grandmothers or you can take it to where they can go interview people at um, assisted living nursing home facilities. Mm -hmm. But I haven't done anything myself. Um, I remember one time, a long time ago, I did a presentation for the Boy Scouts um, and that was because they wanted to get their genealogy merit badge. And from what I can remember from that, the thing that fascinated them the most was the microfilm because they had never seen it before. They didn't even know it existed <laughs> until I pulled out a roll and just showed them what it was. And it was like, oh, that's interesting. And I think I just sadly bored them the rest of the time. And then a couple of years ago, um, the assistant branch manager, she did a children's genealogy program. So that's one group that I want to try to work with, but I'm just not sure the best way of doing it. Okay, thank you. I also found that Family Search has programs for um, children and young adults. Okay. And also, oh, if you look at, um, I forgot now the name of the conference that they have in the winter of each year. On that website, they have information as well. Great, a great idea. I okay, think what okay. excites um, adults is the detective aspect of it, and kids could really get into that if you um, research together. That's neat. Okay, there's a link here about Ask Granny. Thank you. Well, so, now might be a good time to close out because I'm sure we could sit here and enjoy <laughs> talking to each other all day. Yes, um, thank you so much, Quintel. This was fantastic. Everything about it. I, um, I'm so glad that you were willing to let us record it because uh, we'll put it on our State Library YouTube page and I can also share it out to all of you um, since you registered for the, the program. Uh, I'm going to stick around just another minute and I'm going to save the, the transcript and the chat. And um, 
um, and just say thanks for coming today. I really appreciate it. Follow up with both of us. We have a staff here at State Library that um, wants to be able to help you. We we can't do all of your research for you, but we can definitely get you started and give you tips and tell you what we have and um, and look into our resources. And if you're far away, we can make some copies of what we have in our in our collections and send them to you. And, and we like, do that for free. So. And like. And with Virginia, I'd like to piggyback on what she said. Is that same here at Oconee? Like Oconee, I'm I'm essentially the only person that does the local history genealogy stuff. But um, my first job before I became a librarian was worked. I worked for Belk. Well, some people might remember it as Gallant Bell or Belk Simpson. And we worked in a very small store. And our philosophy was, we may not have what you have come in for, but we're going to provide you with the best service that we can, and we'll help you find what you can. And I still am very strong in believe in that philosophy. I may not have the resources that you need, but by golly, I'm going to help you as best I can, and I'm going to point you in as best a direction that I can. That's wonderful. So again, thank you all so much for coming, and uh, I wish you all success. Great job. It was lovely to see all of your faces today. Thank you for turning your videos on. It's really important to connect with you and um, please follow up and we're going to have one more talk in October, October 12th, and I'd love to see you there too. What's October 12th? We're going to have the last of this African American genealogy series. How about I send you a link? I'll send it out to everybody and see if you're interested. Okay. Thank, you right. <laughs> Thank you very much. Y'all have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Quintel. Great You're job. welcome. Thank you. you. An excellent job. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Like that. All right. <laughs>